Hello, in this video we're going to be looking at Vincin version 8, uh, backup and recovery software. Um, I used to use Vincin the lab some time ago, uh, albeit their free version, uh, but I've been asked recently to take a look at Vincin version 8, uh, so here we are. So you can see on the screen here the, um, the, the user interface. I'm not going to go over the installation of this software like I would normally do. Uh, this is basically because Vincent already have really good video guides on this, so it's nothing nothing too complicated. Um, it is a brand new virtual machine that you need to deploy, so you can't install this as an application on an existing server. You do need to deploy a brand new Linux machine, um, which has the Vincent application embedded. So it's a single ISO that does all the operating system and the application deployment. So it's, uh, it's not a two-step process or anything. Once you've installed the OS, it has all the Vincent stuff ready to go. And providing that you've allocated it an IP address, you'll be able to log into the user interface straight away. So that's pretty much as, well, as straightforward as it could possibly get without it being an appliance. Uh, now, looking at the user interface here, uh, there are a few features uh, which I'd like to discuss today. Um, namely, some of the virtual machine backup stuff, but you know, all backup, soft, all backup software these days uh, will back up virtual machines, so that's not too interesting. What I'm going to have a little bit of a focus on here is um, there's the CDP, so the Continuous Data Protection uh, software, and also some of the cloud backup and restore options as well from the software. Um, those seem to be the most interesting to me um, because these things can help with things like ransomware protection um, and offsite backups for your 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 like critical cloud um, workstations or machines. So um, yeah, without uh, delaying too much further, uh, let's take a look. So first of all, as I said, we have the virtual machine backup options here. Uh, now we can just start backing up our virtual machines and restoring them as you'd expect from any kind of backup software these days. Um, but before you do that, you need to go into system and set up all your system settings that are bespoke to the applications. So that's things like your DNS, your NTP, and your email alerting, all that kind of stuff. Once that's been done, um, you can go into resources here and then go into infrastructure, and then we can set up our virtual platform. So I've already set up my vCenter server here, so my, my vSphere platform, um, but you can actually add um, additional platforms. So they support um, everything from vSphere, Hyper-V, Citrix Zen server, uh, all the way through to things like Proxmox um, and over and uh, even like Red Hat virtualization. Um, I actually have a blog post that I've recently published, which is entitled uh, Seven Alternatives VMware vSphere. And it's nice to see that most of those are actually covered here in this backup software. I also want to add here that Vincin supports VM migration between these platforms. So if you're installing a new virtualization platform into your environment, you can, of course, migrate virtual machines between any of these uh, supported virtualization platforms uh, through the Vincian software. So um, yeah, once you've added your uh, virtual platform of choice, which in my case is vSphere, um, you've given it the right credentials, etc. Uh, we can then start looking at the VM backup options. So if we go to virtual machines, we can see all of our virtual machines listed. Um, I've got this Windows Server uh, 22 machine that I can use. So we can select this, and the options, we can either add it to an existing job or create a new job. And this is really like a super intuitive uh, wizard. It's simply four steps. So first step, select your source. So we've already selected that, but you, you can, of course, add others. And then we just go next. Um, the target node, so I'm going to use this management node that I've installed. You can install additional Vincian nodes um, for, like, if you've got a larger uh, infrastructure or larger um, footprint that you want to back up. Um, but I'm just going to use the, the default management one. And then target storage, I'm just going to back it up to the local storage here on the Vinci management machine. But you can add external storage to this uh, via things like NFS um, and consume like uh, you know ex external backup storage or NAS uh, from here as well, which is really nice to see. Uh, so we're going to go next. And uh, now on the second stage of the wizard, we're basically setting up uh, what our backups, where our backup is going to get stored, and setting up the job. So um, for this example here, I'm just going to do a one-off backup. Um, I'm going to start it uh, this evening. So let's say um, let's say 11 p.m. something like that. Um, you can also set up throttling. 
So maximum amount of bandwidth you want the application to use uh, and, on what, and on what days, etc. So that's very granular, it's nice to see. Uh, and then we can set up things like uh, data storage policies. So we could turn on deduplication, we could turn on compression, we can select our level of compression, and we can also choose to encrypt the data as well. Um, and that's, that's really uh, nice to see as well in modern backup software. We can then change our retention. So we can say, you know, how, how many restore points do we want to uh, use for the retention? Or you can say how many backup chains. Um, because I've just got a one-off, this is just a one-off backup job. It's not allowing me to see the other options, but those will be there if you're doing a scheduled job. And then our advanced strategy, we've got some, I can see here, advanced settings. So we can pre-create a snapshot before the backup starts. Uh, we can choose the kind of snapshot that we want to create and use the, the set up things like the number of threads that we want to use for the data transfer. There's also the transmission um, strategy. So we've heard of hot add with all with pretty much all other backup software. We've also got the standard um, uh, MBD uh, and SAN level uh, backup transfer mechanisms. Um, hot add will simply uh, add the virtual machine's disk to this appliance and back it up that way. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, and then, of course, if you want to use a backup proxy, you can enable that here too. And then we have some of the advanced strategies. So we can use things like CBT, um, which is change block tracking in VMware uh, vSphere, and change the block size of the backups as well, and choose whether or not the uh, the backup needs to be quiesced. Uh, so like for application safe snapshots. We're going to, going to go along with the defaults. Uh, so once we've done that, we can give the backup uh, job a name. So I'm just going to leave it as the default here. Uh, and then we can submit that job. And then we have the final stage. Uh, we have the dashboard here underneath the monitor center. Uh, we can just see the backup here, when it was created, uh, and kind of what's happening here. So currently it's just pending. But what we'll do is we'll start that now. And uh, we'll have that running in the background while we look at some of the other options. One of those options being that you can actually restore backup jobs to other virtualization platforms. So let's say you've got both a vSphere and a Hyper-V environment, and you've backed up some uh, virtual machines from vSphere. You can then do a restore of those into Hyper-V, uh, and you can actually do this between any of the supported virtualization platforms that Vinchin supports. So we also have a uh, physical backup, uh, obviously, we not all virtualize sometimes, and sometimes physical backups make more sense. Um, you'll need to install the, the backup agent onto the physical servers before you use the physical backup option. Um, physical backup, um, the agent for that will also be need to be installed if you're going to be do, uh, if you're going to be doing CDP backups. So that's continuous data protection um, backups or replication. You will need the agent installed for that too. Um, and also, if you want to do file backups, database backups, server backups, etc., um, you know, for things like database backups, if even if it's a virtual machine that you want to backup the database for, um, you need to install the agent on the VM in order to do a database level backup. Uh, so yeah, we can go to backup here, and we could choose a backup source. So I already have installed the agent on my Windows Server twenty two machine, and then we can choose like. Um, the, the volumes that we want to back up. So we'll take the whole of the C drive in my example. Um, and then we can set up like inclusions and exclusions for the files that we want to back up. Uh, once again, I'm going to use the same node uh, for destination and we're going to use the same storage. Um, backup strategies, again, this is on a schedule. I'm just going to do a one off. I'm just going to leave all the other settings as default. Uh, but obviously, we need to set a time for the uh, the backup here. So let's let's do that um, a little later on, so it doesn't collide with the other backup. And we'll just submit that with the defaults there. Okay, great. Well, that's all running in the background. Uh, so we can see our vSphere one here is now running, and our file backup now is pending the start of the schedule. All right, so the next interesting thing, and I think the final thing we want to have a look at here is the CDP. So we can start um, a CDP job. Uh, again, you need to have the agent installed on the source machine. So we're going to use our Windows Server 22 machine once again. Uh, and with the machine selected here, 
uh, we can choose on the right hand side the volumes that we'd like to protect. So let's say just want to, see, uh, want to protect everything. We go next and we choose our backup destination. So with this, we can say I want to replicate um, the uh, the backup. Uh, the tooltip here says that uh, we can replicate the server to a standby machine in real time. Now I don't actually have a standard uh, a standby machine set up here, so we're just going to look at what the options are available to us for CDP. Um, it looks like we can simply set um, the source. Obviously, for every source volume, we would set what the mapped volume would be on the standby machine. Uh, so we would need to select those here. Uh, and then failover allows you to uh, fail the machine over to the, the secondary or the standby um, given some event. So let's say there's a network issue or something like that. Uh, we can get it to failover. Uh, and the tooltip tells us all about that here. So upon detecting that the production host or application has triggered failover conditions, automatically complete the data application and IP switch on the standby machine. Uh, so that's really nice. That can really lower that can really lower down your um, your kind of failure time there and uh, help if you're RTO and RPO. Uh, so yeah, we can't go next here because we haven't uh, we don't have that standby machine available. Um, but that's not really a problem. We can see a lot of the functionality here. And uh, yeah, it's just a really nice feature. So um, while I don't have a practical use case for it in my lab, I can see a big use case for this in things like production uh, environments where you need, you know, with a backup restore might take too long. You want to have the data already somewhere else and you want to be able to just have it automatically fail over or fail over on demand. Uh, and that's how you, that's what we'd use here. So we've got the takeover option. Um, so we can kind of just... Uh, set a job up to take over the data and the application and um and bring your your data um your your destination or your recovery server up straight away so there is a few other things that we can do uh, we've talked about vm cloud and physical backups uh, we can actually also back up shares uh so these are like called nas backups here um but you can like um create a nas share uh, in the in the resources um, page uh, down here with with your other systems and then just start backing those up like you would uh, a virtual machine for example uh, so that's really nice to see uh, you've also got the restore options here as well and you can review uh, the backup the backed up data uh, another interesting thing is um, the data resilience uh, option so you can actually create verification jobs to check the health of your backups make sure that they can be restored. Um, these are, this is a very nice uh, feature that stands out with Vinci in version 8. Um, so in order to do that, you need to set up what's called a verification lab. This is a little bit like an isolated um, isolated lab uh, where you can safely restore machines to, uh, and then it, a report can be generated automatically to tell you whether the verification jobs uh, were successful or not. Um, so let's have a very quick look at that. Uh, we won't run any verifications, but we'll have a quick look at how we set up the lab. So again, with Vinchin, it's very straightforward. We just click Add. Um, we give the the lab a name, and we give the the proxy a name. The proxy is like a um, it's like a, a virtual machine that sits within the, uh, the in my case vSphere environment uh, that can like connect the uh, the machine to the uh, the isolated the isolated network and communicate back to us so that we can. Um, we can uh, have a look at them. Uh, and so next we've got the target host. So we can just select uh, one of our hosts in the lab that we want to use uh, for the verification. All right, now that's loaded up, uh, we can choose the storage. So um, I'm just going to allow it to use my local data store here, but you could create your own data store uh, to use exclusively for verification jobs. Uh, in my lab here, I've only got the VM network, so I'm, I'm just going to use this for production. Uh, and then you can give it an IP address. Uh, so let's say 192.168.1.185 uh, um, is free. Um, Submit mask. Uh, and then a gateway. All right, let me go next. This is where we set up the isolated network. 
All right, so production network, we're gonna, that's going to be our VM network here. Uh, and then we can auto generate an isolated network uh, for this. So let's see. Here we go. So, yeah, it's going to create um, a, a subnet mask of the same size. Uh, and then um, it's going to set up a. Oh, yes, here we go. So we need to set up the uh, gateway here for the network. And then the isolated network will automatically generate um, an equivalent network of the same size um, with the proxy VM that was created earlier. Ah, yeah, we actually need to type this in. It was grayed out, but it looked like it had been typed in. Uh, please input production network and ISO network with correct format. I thought we'd also... Oh, there we go. We have to click auto generate again. So that then brings up this uh, this new network here, and it's obviously got a different gateway, which is great. And you can just modify this if it collides or anything in your existing environment. So you can do that for all your networks, and then we're going to submit this. And this will go and build out that VM and uh, deploy the, the sorry deploy the proxy VM uh, and set up uh, the net, the Viset networks etc. within uh, vSphere. Okay, so that verification lab has now been set up. It only took a couple of minutes, which is great. And then what we would usually do here is we'd go back to our verification job. Uh, we create a new one uh, and we select. Um, let's see here. Oh yeah, okay. So we do have a. Um, yeah, we're going to check this restore point here. I know the job's been deleted. This is an old job, but we actually have a valid restore point that we can validate. Uh, so we're going to do that and select it here. Um, we can change the sockets and cores and RAM, etc. Um, in the for the verification, and then we can say which lab we want to use, and then we can choose some of our strategies. So this is going to be very fine now, uh, and it's going to choose this backup node here. Give it a name, and then we can submit the verification job. All right, so in closing here, uh, I'd just like to explain that Vincian has comprehensive documentation and videos on how to configure almost everything within their platform, including all the different types of uh, backup sources, how to complete a restore recovery uh, through the normal backup mechanism and also through CDP, uh, and also some of their cloud features as well. So it's certainly worth taking a look at these videos here if you want to see any of the other features uh, in use. Um, I'd also like to say that their documentation is uh, incredibly clear as well. So uh, there shouldn't really be any ambiguity and these documents are also very easy to understand. Uh, if you're interested in a free trial or to go further with Vinchin, there is a link in the description. Uh, you can go there or you can go directly onto the website and um and find the free trial button and there's no credit card needed or anything like that you can just get up and running with that free trial and uh, give it a go and see what you think and then before we close out here i'd just like to say uh, thank you very much for listening hope this has been useful and uh, if it has please do consider subscribing on youtube and also consider subscribing to the mailing list on the blog for this and more interesting reviews